Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. So what does food mean to you? Join me this week as my special guest is Natasha Levi, who is a gluten-free baker and blogger. And she's come up with this delicious recipe for a sourdough gluten-free bread. Imagine that. I hear it is really delicious. And you're going to hear all about it and where you can find the recipe and and learn how to make gluten-free sourdough bread. Stay with me. And today I have as our special guest, Natasha Levai, and we are actually traveling to Hungary today. She's talking to us from Hungary. And Natasha is a gluten-free blogger and she has a special, actually it's a sourdough bread recipe she developed also. Natasha, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. So much fun to be here. Thank you. And Natasha, so tell us how you got into um, doing gluten-free recipes. I know everybody usually has different reasons. And uh, tell us how you or why you started doing gluten-free. Yeah. um, You know, I grew up in Russia and we, um, I probably never even heard of gluten-free growing up and I didn't even know what gluten is. When I moved to Hungary, I had a couple of friends that were gluten intolerant and sometimes we would have a dinner together where I would invite a few people and I would not even prepare anything for the gluten intolerant people because it would just go out my head like yeah I heard they're gluten intolerant but then I forget because it doesn't exist in my mind somehow Um, and I had a lot of situations like this that were uncomfortable but then somehow I would forget again and again and when I met my uh, future husband there were times when we would um, go visit his family um, or his mom and then I'd bring some cookies or brownies and I would always make them with gluten, but he's gluten intolerant. He's celiac. And um, every time I would offer him some and he'd be like, oh, I'm gluten intolerant. And then after some time I learned because I ended up marrying him. And then I had to really learn how to do gluten free, um, make bread. I think I got into bread baking because I saw what his bread looked like and it looked uh-huh. nothing close to what bread really looks like. It was kind of like a brick. And um, when he cut into it, it fell apart. Like it did hold its shape to some degree, but you know, as soon as you kind of hold it with your hand, it starts breaking apart. Right. If you try to um, put it into a, like a foil or, um, you know, this cling film thing that uh, to take a sandwich somewhere that it would break all the time. And I felt like there must be a way to make it better, especially since if I Google online, you know, gluten-free bread, I see all these gorgeous pictures that there must be a way. Yes. And then I started experimenting with it. Uh-huh. What kind of flowers? Well, how long did it take you to come up with the sourdough recipe? Oh, actually, so, quite some time <laughs> at first when I started doing sourdough was just because it was trendy. It was 2021, I think. And I saw a YouTube video that somebody was doing sourdough bread. And I thought, that is fun. Why don't I try it? And it was a regular mm, sourdough starter with gluten that I made. Um, and then I thought, why don't I make a gluten-free one as well? And my first gluten-free sourdough bread was um, as hard as a rock. It was so bad. I uh, modified the recipe many, many times because I didn't understand all the details of gluten-free. And I thought, well, I don't really need this. I don't really need that. I feel this is like, this is wrong. And I um, kind of intuitively messed up the recipe so much that I lost all motivation to ever try again. Um, And only a year after I came back to it because I discovered psyllium husk psyllium husk is this like secret ingredient in gluten-free baking that really makes your bread um, look and taste like real bread Mm -hmm. and that um, was something that changed everything for me i found a recipe online um, that used certain types of flowers i could get here and psyllium husk and so after i got uh, i had a first successful um, bread that's when i started kind of playing around with different flowers and recipes and trying to develop my own and I went from all kinds, like I went through so many modifications to my recipe, but I, now I feel like it's good enough that I don't feel that something needs to change. But at first it was a little bit too big, then it 
the, it was a little bit too dense and it was a little bit too wet and all these little ingredients. And then I finally was able to um, develop the right ratios. Um, right. And now we have like a Facebook group with gluten-free sourdough uh, community where we have over 30,000 people and I hold workshops so that I can show people how to do this. And we have other gluten-free bakers there also sharing their recipes. So we have a little community doing all those oh, that's things. wonderful. So you do the classes online or online and and live also or just online I, I mainly do them only online because my audience is all in the states yes so i don't really have anyone to teach here <laughs> i have some gluten intolerant <laughs> friends but uh, they're either not into gluten-free baking or they're not into sourdough <laughs> oh, okay i have um i do workshops on zoom live and then i record the workshop and um uh, if somebody wants to you know watch it they can purchase mm -hmm. it and then they watch it and i'm just making different workshops on different topics so that later i can put it all, to all together into one bundle and it would be like a course that people can you know take take yes so what kind of flour do you, i know you mentioned that you said psyllium husk but what kind of flour do you use then do you use the flour of the psyllium husk for your sourdough bread or is it a combination of different flours so it's a combination. Generally, um, for gluten-free bread, you can't just go with one type of flour. Um, like we, in regular baking, we'll take wheat flour and we can just make gorgeous bread with just one type of flour because it has so many um, elements to it. Where with gluten-free, if you just use, let's say, rice flour, you're going to have very dense and gritty bread. Or if you just use um, a starch, you know, it's not going to uh, work. So you need a um, combination. Generally, it's... Um, a combination of four different flours, two starch type, two types of starch, and then two types of flour. Uh -huh. um, I've tried a lot of different ones, and the best uh, combinations that I've found is brown rice and buckwheat flour or brown rice and sorghum flour. Those two seem to work better, and there are, you know, there are lighter flours and heavier. So let's say brown rice, I think, is a heavier flour, then buckwheat is a little bit lighter and... Um, Sorghum flour, I think, is a little bit lighter. Uh -huh. And then a combination of of them kind uh -huh. of allows for those air pockets within the bread. Where if you use, let's say, millet, which is heavier, uh -huh. with brown rice together, then you will get a more dense loaf. That was uh, my problem before because I was using millet and brown rice. And right. as soon as I switched to sorghum flour, it changed the texture drastically. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, it, you know, it's good that there's somebody there that can teach everybody because I know it takes a lot of experimenting when you're doing a recipe, a gluten-free recipe, especially a sourdough bread. So is the sourdough bread, does it have kind of the same consistency as the regular sourdough bread? When it's at the dough stage, no, um, it is more like pasty you can't really stretch it or fold it like the regular sourdough um it doesn't have any stretchiness to it at all because it doesn't have gluten so uh -huh. it's basically oh, yeah. just like play-doh uh-huh yeah it's like play-doh and you shape it into a ball and then That's let cool. it proof and then you bake it but once it's baked it doesn't uh -huh. fall apart it stays together and it does feel like real bread i can eat both so i can compare and I think it's 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 close, although sometimes I do miss um, just fluffy white bread. So I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm ready to go 100% gluten-free and not miss mm -hmm. um, the wheat-based bread. But I think gluten-free sourdough comes pretty close. Oh, wow. That's great. Well, that's great. So, Natasha, can you tell, I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to try to uh, learn how to make this bread. And um, so do you do, let me just ask you before we go, Do you, are there any other things on your blog other than the sourdough? I'm sure you're really popular for that because that's hard to find. But do you get into other baking then, gluten-free baking on your blog? Yeah, uh, so my blog ma mainly focuses around gluten-free um, and I don't have as many recipes just yet because I've mm -hmm. only been for two years that I've been doing this blog almost two years not even two oh, okay. full years and I started not as a gluten-free blogger I started as everything and I was trying to find my voice find my niche for some time and then I niched down 
to gluten-free sourdough just a few months ago. So, or to gluten-free just a few months ago. And so now right. I have, let's say, a few macaroon recipes. I have um, gluten-free bread, gluten-free sourdough, and a few desserts here and there, a few like dinner recipes, soup recipes that uh -huh. were gluten-free that I could keep from my previous um, kind of blog development, so to say. But right. now, right now, I am focusing on gluten-free bread. So it's gluten-free sweet breads, quick uh -huh. breads, regular breads with different types of flour because some people are allergic to potatoes so they're yes. looking for something else or they're allergic to grains so they'll look for a specific type and I'm focusing on those right now so in the next few months I'll be just posting gluten-free breads. That's great well that's definitely that alone I know it's hard for people to find or to make their own gluten-free bread because it can be difficult if you don't take the time like you did to experiment with the flowers and all you know to figure out what what makes it's like a science experiment really you have to figure out what makes a good consistency that's great so Natasha tell us where can people find you what's the title of your blog and the address people can find you online oh it's called natasha's home so it's called natasha's um, uh -huh. the website okay um, and my instagram and my facebook linked are linked there and i'm mainly on facebook in my group but i answer messages too if anybody needs help with gluten-free <laughs> definitely okay and um on facebook where do people find you what's your name on facebook Levi Natasha. Oh, okay. Levi Natasha. Okay. Take care. Okay. So people can find you on Facebook and also on your blog. And I know I've heard so much about this sourdough recipe. That's how we found you. So I'm sure people are going to want to check that out. Um, well, Natasha, much success with your blog and adding more recipes because I'm sure I know it sounds like you really take your time and um add more recipes and things like that so do you have any books in the work did you ever think about writing a book <laughs> yeah and you know what's interesting is that um there are two ways of publishing a book right. nowadays you can either go through a company that publishes books and then they tell you how much time you have what you should be doing they give you the money for it it's called advance you get the money and then once the book is ready um, you only get royalties after some time. So you don't get so much money afterwards when you're selling the book. While there is such a thing as called self-publishing, where you are publishing through a company that doesn't really dictate what you do. They don't care. They don't even check what you do. You can print anything you want and it's up to you whether you can sell it. Yes. Um, and then you get 100% minus whatever fees it take for processing you know, and, yes. and services. Yes. And that is more sustainable because now you are in control of who you're marketing to, how many people are buying it and how much you're making with it exactly. and what actually goes into the book. So what yes. I wanted to do is to do self-publishing way because, I mean, I'm in Hungary. So there's it's really difficult with, yes. for me to go through an American publisher because my audience is American yeah. um, and I'm not re really interested in <laughs> all that kind of work. And I heard. Yeah. I've heard how difficult it could be for food bloggers to develop, I don't know, like a hundred recipes within a few months Yes, um, and how stressful and depressing it can get. Um, yes. So I want to take all of those workshops that I've been working on, all these presentations, you know, on gluten-free sourdough and um, the starter and so many questions that people are asking in our group that I just see what people are struggling with that I would never think of if I just went from my own little experience. Oh, yes. And so when I will have time, I would like to put it together and then oh. self-publish it as a gluten-free sourdough guide. Um, just it is a little bit time consuming to figure out how to do all this stuff and right, um, right. focusing on something else right now. But I have an ebook that um, I offer to people who would rather have something offline downloaded on their yes. phone versus oh, that's, online. That, that's a good idea. And yeah, I mean, books are, you know, you're online. So you any you really don't need to do a book. I was just, you know, asking, but you're absolutely right. You want to, it sounds better if you do publish the book on your own because you can have control over what you're putting in the book versus giving that to a company that wants to dictate 
what you're putting in the book and it's that's not really your book so i i would certainly understand natasha thank you so much for being here and uh so it's natashashome.com right mm -hmm. your blog okay so everybody can uh, go to your blog find great gluten-free recipes and they're great i don't i myself don't have to eat gluten-free but i do a lot of times because sometimes it can prove to be a little bit healthier for you too so you know even if you don't have to eat gluten-free it's worth a worth a try natasha thank you so much for being here natasha's home.com and hopefully we'll have you back on in the future when you get some more recipes together thank you so much it was fun to be here you're welcome thanks Thanks for listening to the Maria Liberati Show. And thanks to my producer, Britton Roselle, and this week's special guest, Natasha Levi. And as always, you can find me at marialiberati.com. You can also find info on all the podcasts at our new website for the podcast, the Maria Liberati Show.com. And our new YouTube channel for the podcast. You can see guests on video at the Maria Liberati show on YouTube. And you can also find me on my Roku channel, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking by Maria Liberati. And you can find me on Instagram at Maria Liberati, on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati, on Twitter at Maria Liberati, on my Vimeo channel Maria Liberati on Pinterest at Maria Liberati and uh, let's see on LinkedIn at Hem Liberati and as always if you have any questions for any of my guests or any questions or any topics you'd like to see us cover please send us an email at info at Maria Liberati.com or just um, you can comment or message us and don't forget to share each episode with your friends and share on social media as well. Hope to hear from you and until next week, peace, love, and pasta.